worried about letting someone else pick out the perfect avocado for your perfect impress them on the third date guacamole? Well, good thing Instacart shoppers are as picky as you are. They find ripe avocados like it's their guac on the line. They are milk expiration date detectives. They bag eggs like the 12 precious pieces of cargo they are. So let Instacart shoppers overthink your groceries so that you can overthink what you'll wear on that third date. Download the Instacart app to get free delivery on your first three orders while supplies last. Minimum $10 per order. Additional terms apply. Dive into the start of summer at Whole Foods Market. Check out their summer splash event with sales on fresh organic produce, organic strawberries, and a fan favorite sale on Ben and & Jerry's and Talenti. Explore deals on grill-friendly meats like organic air-chilled chicken breast, beef and chicken kebabs, all with no antibiotics ever from our meat department. Plus, grab easy sides from prepared foods and cool off with refreshing drinks. Kick off your summer and shop in store or online at Whole Foods Market today. Save on Cox Internet when you add Cox Mobile and get fiber-powered internet at home and unbeatable 5G reliability on the go. So whether you're playing a game at home yes, cool. or attending one live, no! you can do more without spending more. Learn how to save at cox.com slash internet. Cox Internet is connected to the premises via coaxial cable. Cox Mobile runs on the network with unbeatable 5G reliability as measured by Ookla LLC in the U.S. to H 2023. Results may vary, not an endorsement. Other restrictions apply. Showtime. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Ready. ready. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. This is the Bob and Jeff Show, starring Bob Lutz. What do you want me to be? This Here are the choices. This guy. Jeff, how are you? You look good today. Did you trim your eyebrows? I like, I like. Jeff Lutz. It's not really about sense of humor. It's about whether I want to humor you. Do I? So not really. 97.5 in 1240 KFH. I heartily endorse this event or product. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to a Friday edition of the Bob and Jeff Show on KFH Radio. Bob Lutz, Jeff Lutz, here to co-host. Max Bauer is producing and engineering. Uh, boy, what a day. What's, what's been going on out at the uh, State High School track and field meet? You know, a lot of stuff. Uh, a lot of winners, some losers, some prelims happening. A lot of stuff going on tomorrow. We've got track. We've got field. We've got it all. What's your main story? What's your... What's Price your... Uh, Burkdahl. What he uh, what he clear today? Seventeen two. Uh, that's lower than his previous record, but still, it's, I'm sure far and away it's the still winner. Still the meat record. Uh, his personal best is seventeen nine. So he went straight from seventeen two to seventeen ten. He did not mess around with trying to incrementally. And did he come close at seventeen ten? Pretty close. I think he'll, uh, his brother's at KU, and he's going to KU. His brother's clearing 18 feet and doing well, and he'll he'll do that too eventually. Uh, but a good meet, a new meet, a meet record. Are my guys uh, Don Steffens and Carol Swenson still out there? I don't know. Man. I wouldn't know him if I saw him. Who's Is Don Steffens the PA guy? Yeah. And he's been doing it for years and years and years. Pretty sure he's still out there. And uh, you should have got him for the show. How do I get him? He's way up at the top. I don't know. Just figure it out. You call him. Um, Don Stefan is what I call him. And also, I can't get him for the show. He's doing the track meet. I understand that, but Don Stefan is uh, that guy. I don't know what that means. That's what I called him. That guy virtually taught me track and field. Uh, used to be at East High back in the day. Long, what long. What do you need to learn ago. about track and field? He just taught me the ropes. First person he taught to me cross everything. wins. Shut up. It's pretty I'm easy. So tired of you. Pretty easy to figure you it out. Know, I'm serious. Look right in my eyes. You know how Bryce Barkdoll won the pole vault? Highest, Jeff, highest jump. You don't jump. know a thing about track and field. I don't. No. What you do I? Know what, what am I missing? Thing to ask an athlete. I don't. No. Really? No. It's interesting. No. I wrote four stories today. And didn't. Didn't ask and I'll any, bet they're all terrible. Didn't ask any How do you questions. Like that? Okay, maybe they are. Yeah. If you're going to get in on this show and rip me apart. Well, good grief. I figured out track and field. What did you figure out next? The puppet I didn't show? didn't participate in track and field. That was funny. He, uh, he taught me. He taught me what to cover, how to cover it. Uh, he, he taught me where to look for records and... He was he was incredible. It's great stuff. 
You don't care. I don't. No, you don't think you need any mentoring or help. I don't mentoring. How I'm many 82. people did you ask for help today? Zero. Really? Why would I ask for help? What did you write a story on? I just told you. Okay, that's one. You said you wrote four. Yeah, I wrote on the high jump. A kid from Mays won the high jump. I wrote on a girl from Salina Central who won the uh, 3,200. And I wrote on the girl from Northwest who's competing in the hurdles. And she won her heat today. Are you back out there tomorrow? Of course. All day. I don't know about all day, but I'll be out well, there. I don't know for how you couldn't be. Significant chunk because it goes until after seven. I'm not right. staying out there. That's that an all day thing. I'll write what I need to write, and I'll get the heck out of there. Back when I covered it, I'm, it's all day. You're there till the bitter end. I'm not going to be there till the bitter end. And you're typing results, and you're doing every. I don't need to do any of that. Just a just a, a an incredible amount of work in a two day period. Well, it's a lot for some of us. Uh, saw saw my friend Brent Maycock out there. Saw my saw my buddy Scott Pask. Saw my good friend Matt Kelly. Saw my great friend Bill Faflick out there. Just kind Bill of Bill Faflick's a great friend. Oh, of one you. of my best. Did he even know you? Of course. He took time out. He was talking to somebody else. He pushed that person aside and now be serious. Did said, he even know you? Of course. Did you have to say hi? I'm Jeff Flutes. Why would I have to say Bob that? Son. Good grief! Uh, you know I've been doing this for. Half my life, more than, actually. I've known Bill Faflick a long time. He knows me. I know him. Okay, what did he coach? Stuff. When he was a coach, what did he coach? I don't know. I don't know him as a he coach. He coached track and field. Well, then that must have been why he's out there. He was a tremendous runner in his prime. That's his main claim to fame in athletics. Well, for you, for those in my generation, it's being the city league athletic director. Well, sure, being high up at Keisha. Uh, right. Well, that's all. That all came after the fact. Well, that's that's what I'm saying. But that's what we know him as. Well, that's because you don't delve in. What do I need to delve in? Have into? you ever asked Bill Faflick, Bill, what what kind of an athlete were you? No, I didn't need to. <laughs> Does he ask me? He doesn't care. Oh, well, there you go. But Bill Faflick has stature. Be fun to uh, maybe write about him if you're at KWCH. That's unlikely, but you never know. Probably going to focus on the athletes who are competing this weekend. Today on the show, speaking of Bryce Burkdahl, he will join us at 325. We'll talk about his record-setting day at the State High School track and field meet for Andover Central. Uh, but earlier than that, at 225, Tommy Lapore from Wichita State Baseball uh, they came back and not only came back, they came back with a vengeance on East Carolina yesterday, won that game 14 to four after being down early. They are now into, uh, tomorrow's round and they only need two more wins to get to the NCAA tournament. Semifinals tomorrow. Yes. We didn't see this coming. Did we? Well, I don't know. Once, uh, once Trey Savage gets hurt and all bets are off a little bit. In Wichita State, we know their top two of Favors and Lapour are pretty good. And we know their offense is pretty good. So, I don't know. I'm not too surprised by it. Really? N not really. Well, they beat a top 20 team yesterday. Right, without their without their best guy. Well, that, that, that you're a top 20 team regardless. It helps. Of who you have. When you have a first rounder in, in at the top of your rotation. Yeah. Sounds like they got a pretty good starting pitching effort yesterday. Wichita State got to the bullpen. No, the starter came out in the first. Their second guy was the one who pitched well, and then the third guy did not. Well, the third guy blew up. Uh, and hopefully at 245, we are efforting Josh Robertson, the head baseball coach at Trinity Academy. They are into the championship game in Class 3A baseball. And they are the only team in our area to even make it out of the first round. Really? An utter, a dismal uh, first round. Mays lost. Mays lost. Hate that for Mays. Uh, Heights lost. Bishop Carroll lost. All the teams in 4A, Circle and Rose Hill What's lost. What's the line of Central do in the second round? Did we, do we have any of that information? I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'll look it up. 
They're out in uh, Manhattan. Trinity is in 4A or whatever class they're in. Are they in 4A or 3A? They're in 3A, as I just said. Well, I didn't I didn't hear you. Josh Robertson appears to be uh, confirmed. He confirmed with you, but not me. Yeah, that makes sense, right? What does that mean? It means we're buddies. We go back a long way. Another one of my great friends. You're very insecure today. Uh, Salina Central Cinderella run comes to an end. Spring Hill, the one seed, I'm sorry, the four seed, Spring Hill, defeated Salina Central 12-2 to two earlier today. Uh, so we've got Salina South and Aquinas in that other bracket in 5A. You better know who wins that. And uh, that will be your championship in 5A. 6A, Olathe South is into the semifinals. Uh, they are 13-13. and 13. They knocked off 27-1 and 1 Olathe West. Saw that. In the first round. Wichita Heights was defeated 14 to nothing by Shawnee Mission East. Some good baseball being played in that part of the state, apparently. Didn't used to be. We used to be the ones. Well, it's all spread out now. 6A, 5A. Is it spread out? In this part of the state, yeah, it is. All, all these schools used to be 6A. Now they're kind of 5A or they're 4A, and it's just, you know, it's hard to uh, build anything. Well, That's, the Kansas City area is blown up. I want to know what's going on with all these sports. It's how's softball going? How's soccer going? I haven't been able to uh, really zone in on any of these things. Well, I'm sorry you haven't. I, I kind of am too, to be honest. In uh, 6A soccer, we have Olathe, Olathe East as the champion. Already? Uh, they defeated Shawnee Mission West. Uh, Dodge City was the only real Western school in 6A soccer, 5A soccer, Mays South has won the championship. Uh, they won 3-2. to two. Well, who's their coach? Shouldn't we Wait get... a minute. That's uh, from last. <laughs> Forget that. I was about that. to say. Forget that. And that Mays South didn't win it last year. So that's Yeah, even... be quiet. I'm trying to figure this out, okay? Let's figure it out. Okay, so let me start over. 6A. You have the semifinals today. Mays is one of those participants. Only four. In 5A, you also have semifinals today. Mays South and Bishop Carroll right. are in the semifinals, facing Blue, Va Blue Valley Southwest and St. Thomas Aquinas. Uh, so we've got all that coming up. And in Class 4-1A out at the Stryker Complex, McPherson and Rose Hill are still alive. Rose Hill faces Bishop Miege, and McPherson plays at Topeka School. Care Paravel uh, slash Eskridge Mission Valley. Bizarre. Uh, here's some softball for you. 6A campus is into the second round. They're playing right now against Olathe South in 5A. Uh, we're looking at a semifinal game right now happening between... My Derby girls lost? Yes. Mays South and Bishop Carroll are playing in 5A as we speak. Oh, that's just gargantuan. And in 4A, Andale Garden Plain is into the championship game because, obviously. Why wouldn't they be? Are you cheering for them a little bit? I don't know. My, my daughter's eligibility has been exhausted. Wichita Trinity also in the uh, 3A softball semifinals. Well, congratulations to them. Everybody's doing a heck of a job out there. All right, we'll keep tab, uh, tabs on the spring sports uh, championships that are being held all over the state, but especially here in Wichita with baseball, softball, soccer, track and field, the big one. How was? How are the crowds? Was everybody Good. comfortable? Was everybody... Everybody seemed fine. They had a nice little grandstand on the they east built side. built shade pl areas and... I don't know. I didn't really pay attention to all that, but... It, I didn't see anyone really struggling to, to well, find seating. Well, they build little communities, little tent cities for these schools. Oh, I know, I know all that. It didn't seem like there were as many this year. But, uh, again, it seemed like a lot of people were comfortable and fine. Well, there's nothing like the state high school track. A lot going on. And if, if only you had the, question, the answers to the questions that I have, I'd be, I'd be pleased. What are the questions? Don Steffens. 
What about him? I'm going to I'm going to text Scott Pask and see if Don Steffens is still doing. I already PA. told you he was. Don would be in his early to mid 70s. Okay. He's still doing it. I was there. He's still the guy. You're sure about that? I I am, yes. And what about Carol Swinson? I don't know who that is. I mean, I know who that is, but I don't know who Keeping that is. Keeping track of the the results. No idea. And kind of helping Don. Did they have that little uh, area on the infield set up? Uh, maybe. What Don does is calls the races. I know what Don does. He he's up in the at the top. He was in the press box. No, usually, usually. Well, someone's in the press box. That might have been Carol. Usually, Don has a little area, elevated area on the infield there at Cessna Stadium, where he can overlook things. But he's on the infield. Up, I on don't know. I don't know. Sca- some scaffolding. I'll have to see if I can, but I don't think that's the case. Well, I'm very curious about you're it for whatever reason. Well, then text Scott. No, no one else cares. <laughs> I think people have bought into it. I I think people may care. They now. don't. They're happy to see their their children perform, their athletes, their friends, their you know relatives. Maybe I'm delusional, but I think we've created some amount of care. I like I like uh, the historical perspective that Mr. Steffens. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Offers when he you know when someone's crossing the and he's the guy who knows what where that ranks on in the meet. Uh, history. He's irreplaceable. State history. Irreplaceable. Well, yeah, there, I don't think there's a guy like him coming up behind him. Both he he, he and Carol have uh, their, their value to high school sports in this state has been immeasurable. You can't even measure it. You know, Carol went back and did all the records for basketball. And uh, they give out that record book at the state basketball tournament. In the program? Yeah. Okay. At yeah. least I think they do. Well, I've got a track program that maybe I'll let you look at later, but probably well, not. Well, I'd like to look at the track program. I'll give it to you next week. It's out in my car. I don't want to go get I'm that. I'm completely into the history of high school sports in Kansas. Well, uh, the the track program gives you a lot of it. Tells you to meet records and, and, that's and who's Carol doing Swinson's what. Wilson's work. It's pretty impressive. In case you wondered. I'm just telling you. There, we spent some good time on. It's interesting to see like the the previous state records. I didn't look at all of them, but when I was looking at the high jump, because I wrote about a high jumper, uh, the the six A meet record was set twenty nine years ago. It's like by Brad Spear. No, he didn't set the meet record. Who? He's got the state record. Who? Uh, some guy from Garden City. You know, when I was uh, working on the 150 for 150 event, remember that? Yes. And we were going to bring back all these great City League Wichita athletes, high school athletes, and we were going to celebrate that, and then COVID hit. Yeah, I remember. And it was so disheartening. And I try not to think about it, but you've made me think about it. How? By mentioning Brad Spear. You mentioned Brad Spear. (laughs) By mentioning high jumping. Um, and Brad Spears, somebody I had talked to and he was living in Colorado and he was very excited about potentially coming back and, uh, was thankful that he was one of the, one of the people that, well, he's got the state record in the high jump. I would imagine he is one of the one. Yeah. But Brad was a good basketball player too. And I, I, you know, I just enjoyed, I enjoyed that, that time as you know. But my point was that me are, have we found the the limit of the human body what it can do? This is a record set thirty years ago. You see, like the long jump world record is some, it's it was set a long time ago. I think. Well, there are and, limits. I think we found them for the most part. Probably. Probably to some degree, some degree in track and field, it's very hard to establish records. In track and field. Uh, did the kid from Trinity run today? No, he's tomorrow. Well, that'll be the most anticipated race. His for his, uh, his 800. Yeah, 1600. No, his 800. He's trying to go for the mile record. I thought he was, a- I thought he was after the 800 record. He might be that too, but we were, he's trying to, trying to run a sub-four-minute mile. 
Clayton Shively is who we're talking about. Clay, we called him. So I'll need to check when he's running tomorrow. Well, they usually run those events fairly early. Yeah, I was there it's, before they used it to started start today. Thirty two hundreds on that's Saturday. What, that's what they started with today. That used to be the Saturday thing, and it'd take forever. Well, the pole vault took forever today, but that's all right. All right, little discussion about mostly state track and field, which is going on at, at Wichita State at uh, Cessna Stadium, one of the great events we have here year after year, and thankfully uh, they are here for these two days. We'll take a break. When we come back, we will talk Shocker Baseball. Tommy Lapore from Wichita State, one of their outstanding young pitchers. They are into the semifinals of the American Athletic Conference baseball tournament down in Clearwater, Florida. They next play tomorrow. We'll visit with Tommy Lapore, Lapore next. Worried about letting someone else pick out the perfect avocado for your perfect impress them on the third date guacamole? Well, good thing Instacart shoppers are as picky as you are. They find ripe avocados like it's their guac on the line. They are milk expiration date detectives. They bag eggs like the 12 precious pieces of cargo they are. So let Instacart shoppers overthink your groceries so that you can overthink what you'll wear on that third date. Download the Instacart app to get free delivery on your first three orders while supplies last. Minimum $10 per order. Additional terms apply. Dive into the start of summer at Whole Foods Market. Check out their summer splash event with sales on fresh organic produce, organic strawberries, and a fan favorite sale on Ben and & Jerry's and Talenti. Explore deals on grill-friendly meats like organic air-chilled chicken breast, beef and chicken kebabs, all with no antibiotics ever from our meat department. Plus, grab easy sides from prepared foods and cool off with refreshing drinks. Kick off your summer and shop in store or online at Whole Foods Market today. Save on Cox Internet when you add Cox Mobile and get fiber-powered internet at home and unbeatable 5G reliability on the go. So whether you're playing a game at home yes, cool. or attending one live, no! you can do more without spending more. Learn how to save at cox.com slash internet. Cox Internet is connected to the premises via coaxial cable. Cox Mobile runs on the network with unbeatable 5G reliability as measured by Ookla LLC in the U.S. to H 2023. Results may vary, not an endorsement. Other restrictions apply. This is the Bob and Jeff Show on 97.5 and 1240 KFH. All right, Tommy Lepore joins us on the hotline, Wichita State freshman pitcher who's had a remarkable year and a very good game yesterday in the Shockers' 14-4 win over East Carolina in the American Athletic Conference Tournament down in Clearwater, Florida. Wichita State now set to play very early tomorrow morning against the winner of the East Carolina Rice game, which is being played today. Tommy, hello. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. You bet. So this team seems to have started to play its baseball, best baseball at exactly the right time. Do you agree with that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, definitely got hot at the right point. Uh, Coach Green kind of brought us together after a a very rough April and uh, the right before the KU game. And he's like, I mean, April was terrible, but it's May and we have a chance to kind of turn this thing around and hopefully get hot and make a run in the tournament. Like we know we can. So, you know, it's just playing ball. Like we know how to. And you might be pitching your best uh, late in the season when it kind of matters most. So what, especially these, these last three starts, what have they kind of taught you about how you can succeed? Because early on you were getting a lot of strikeouts. These last three starts you haven't struck out as many, but you're also not giving up runs, and you're not really giving up that many hits. So what have, what have those three starts, uh, the last three, taught you about yourself? Um, yeah, I mean, they've, they've definitely been learning experiences, uh, just been a kind of a, a lot of changes kind of happened over the season. Coach Clags has done a, a great job of kind of giving me a, a breakdown in the game plan of how to attack these teams and what I needed to do to be successful. But, uh, definitely learned a lot about, 
you know, you don't need to strike everyone out to get out. And it helps me stay in the game longer and helps my bullpen and helps the team win. Um, but it's just been a, a little bit of an adjustment of not pitching the contact, but um, not worrying as much as striking guys out because at the end of the day, I mean, it all, it all counts the same. Tommy Lepore is our guest out of Blue Springs, Missouri, a freshman pitcher at Wichita State. Uh, so yesterday you were out there for six and two-thirds innings. You gave up a couple runs, I believe, in the second inning against East Carolina. You guys fell behind. You knew they weren't going to have their ace. You knew that they eventually would uh, get deep into their bullpen. How much confidence did you go into that game with? Um, I... I mean, I don't know if it was a, a lot of confidence, um, more than more confidence than usual. Uh, I mean, East Carolina is obviously a, a powerhouse program, and they're they're really well coached, and they're a super talented team. So anytime you're you're going in to play a top ten team, I mean, you know that it's it's going to be a dogfight. But um, I think Coach Claggs did a, a great job of preparing kind of a game plan and just getting me as prepared as possible. And our hitters have been doing a a great job of not only hitting the ball, but playing a really good defense behind me. So, I mean, that's always, that's always gives you more confidence when you know that your offense is going to put up some serious uh, runs. So you were a highly touted guy coming out of Missouri, but you know, you're still a freshman. So has any of uh, your college baseball experience, has any of that surprised you? Uh, what is, what was the environment like yesterday? Your first postseason start uh, at Wichita state, uh, just what's what's kind of the overall experience been like? Yeah, I mean it, it's been a it's been a great experience. It's been a, a great freshman year, but freshman year is a lot about learning. Uh, it was definitely a huge adjustment trying to adjust to college hitters and college zones. And I mean, you gotta you figure out pretty quickly that a lot of people at this level can hit the fastball, so it doesn't matter how hard you throw it. Um, but I mean, the, the environment yesterday was awesome. ECU has them. They have a great fan base, and um, they in the fifth inning they did their their safety dance, which is their thing, and their their fans were into it the whole game. But I mean, I commend our our fans. We had a, a lot of people show up, and they were loud, and they kind of rallied us and kept us going. So, um, but I mean, the atmosphere was awesome. But just kind of tried to treat it as much as the regular game as you can, and kind of take all the good energy and just leave the the nerves and the bad energy to the side if you can. Talking uh, Shocker baseball with Tommy Lapour from from Wichita State. So you were you are an all around athlete. You participated. You kind of had a strange uh, group of sports given your size. You're a big guy. You are a wide receiver in football. Uh, you wrestled mm-hmm. in the 220 pound weight class, and then obviously you played baseball. How how important was you was it to you, Tommy? Uh, to play a variety of sports growing up and then even in high school. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think it's one of the best things that you can do. Um, I talked to coach Clags about it a little bit too. He's like, when you're looking at multi-sport guys, it's just, it, it's a different animal because like, let's say wrestling, for example, I'm going mono mono one-on-one against a guy and it's, it's super physical. And, um, I mean, you have to work so hard to get in condition and shape and you learn a lot of discipline from that. And then you look at from the football side, you look at it from kind of a a team building aspect of 11 guys who have to go in and do their jobs and all that. Um, and I think that all the coaches that I've had from, uh, back at blue spring South, like coach Horner, coach Wilmis, uh, coach Simpson. I mean, all those guys have taught me so much and kind of, formed me into the player that I am today. How do the how do the mentalities of those uh three different sports kind of cross over, overlap a little bit? You mentioned the the one on one aspect of, of wrestling. I have to imagine that's a lot like uh, uh you know a batter versus pitcher and even, you know, football, mm-hmm. obviously a team game, but you're lined up across a defensive back, you're trying to get the best of him. Are though are, are there crossovers within those three that you kind of uh rely upon? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, mentality, especially being on the mound, you're kind of setting the tone for your team and uh, the guys who are going to come out of the bullpen behind you. So kind of 
trying to keep a, a strong mentality of it's it's me versus you and I'm gonna I'm gonna give you my best stuff and I'm gonna come at you for as long as I'm in the game and I'm gonna be um yeah, I mean it obviously you know, if you walk somebody you can't go over and double leg take down the guy, but um I mean there's a there's a lot to take from it. Tommy Lapore is our guest, Wichita State freshman pitcher. Uh, so it's an, it, it, your bio is very short, but it's very interesting to me. Your mother uh, played college volleyball at Central Missouri. Uh, you have a couple of sisters who are playing collegiately volleyball. Uh, just talk mm-hmm. about the pervasiveness of that sport in your family. And then do you stop by Chris Lamb's office and offer any pointers ever? <laughs> Uh, no. Um, but I mean, having an athletic family is, it, it's awesome because it was, it was the standard was kind of set, um, by my parents of, you know, we want you guys to be healthy. We want you to be athletic. We want you to be strong. So, I mean, it's, it's really cool when I get the opportunity to go and work out with my entire family and push each other. Um, my, my middle sister, Aubrey came down for the tournament. So it was, it was awesome to see her down here. Um, and, She's she's an animal. She works so hard, and so does my mom and my dad and my other sister. But um, they we all push each other. It's it's awesome to be able to do family workouts and things like that. Uh, going back just to this this team real quick how how do you guys stay in the moment? I guess especially you know you're an undefeated team. You're into the semifinals. You don't have to work your way. Uh, yet, yet, at least through through the losers bracket, you really control your own destiny here. But it is still you got to win one, and then you got to win another. Uh, you may have to win another from that, depending on how everything goes. So, is it difficult not to look ahead and and get excited about the possibilities? How do you kind of stay grounded? Yeah, I mean, uh, Coach Green talked about it dating back even to kind of Memphis. Whenever we had we had punched our ticket, he was like, "Man, we got to leave Clearwater where where it is and focus on." just winning today. And I think that our team has kind of stuck with that and not tried to worry too much about um, the next day or the day after or anything like that. It's just kind of trying to take everything day by day and win by win. And like today, when we have a day off and we're not, we're not so much worried about uh, the game tomorrow. We're worried about getting better at practice today to prepare us for the game tomorrow. So just trying to, just trying to cut things. Um, You know, if you hear a person talking about, you know, the championship or if this happens, then we have to do this. Just kind of trying to cut that off and be like, man, let's, let's worry about uh, today. Talking with Tommy Lapour from Wichita state. So you and Caden favors have been uh, the two real mainstays in that starting pitching group. Uh, now we get to game three. Uh, how does it look for the shockers now pitching wise? It looks great. Um, Caden did a great job of, going deep into games and kind of saving our bullpen. Um, but I mean, we have full and complete trust in everyone in that bullpen and everyone that we brought here. Um, I think we got a, a lot of guys who, even though they might not have pitched as much as um, a whole lot this season that can go out there and shut games down. And uh, coach Clags talked about it today a little bit in our pitchers meeting. And he was just like, man, like, you're going to have an opportunity to go do something really cool and you got the talent and you just got to go, go take it and go attack and just know that your stuff is good and have trust in that and just go attack. You've mentioned your pitching coach a few times, Anthony Claggett, uh, obviously got to the big leagues. Uh, You know, another guy that came from outside of the program has had been with coach green for a while. What have been your impressions uh, of him and what's it like to work with him? Oh, it's, it's awesome. Me and coach Clags have a, have a great relationship and he is a, he's super talented pitching coach and he does a great job with his, his preparation and all the meetings. He's helped me a lot with my uh, mentality and a lot with my mechanics. I mean, if you look at video for me, uh, as a, as a little, uh, as a senior in high school coming into to now, it's, it's completely night and day of where I'm at and my baseball IQ and just, Really, every part of my game uh, has been just hats off to Coach Clags because he is a—he's unbelievable at what he does. You said little senior. You were wrestling at two twenty. I don't think there was anything little. <laughs> yeah. 
Tommy Lapura yeah. is our guest from Wichita State Baseball. So one thing we haven't asked you, you're out of Blue Springs, Missouri, not far away. I'm sure you were heavily recruited being a very sought after a baseball player and a, and a big time prospect. So why Wichita State? Why, why come to a program where they, there's a first year coach? Uh, the program has kind of, kind of hit a plateau a little bit, hadn't really taken off. Uh, what made you think that this was the right fit for you, Tommy? Yeah, um, definitely just, I think Coach Green, I mean, from the second I, I hopped on the phone with him, I could tell he kind of had a different energy about him. And just hearing more about what he's done for programs and um, just just so much about him, man. He is a, his energy that he brings and the vision that he talks about um, and his just – his belief. Like, I feel like a lot of times when you're talking to college coaches, it's a, kind of a used car salesman pitch trying to just promise you a lot of things that they can't promise you. But with Coach Green, I mean, it was – it was straight to the point, and I mean, I really believed in him and the staff that he brought on. I mean, every every coach that he has hired or the people that were already here have been unbelievably lights out. Um, and just, you know, I think that um, the 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 stadium and just everything about Wichita, um, the the history behind it, and having Gene Stevenson here is awesome, and just just the belief, man, that we can turn this thing around and kind of get it back to where it was. And I just, I truly believe that we could build something great here. All right. That's a good answer to that question, Tommy. We really appreciate it. Congratulations on your outing yesterday, a win over East Carolina. Shockers again back in action in the AAC tournament tomorrow at 8 o'clock here, our time in Wichita, against the winner of Rice, East Carolina, Two wins away from the uh, college baseball uh, NCAA tournament. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, man. Have a good one. Josh Robertson joins us, the head baseball coach at Trinity Academy. They are going to be participating in the championship game of the Class 3A state tournament coming coming up a little bit later uh, this afternoon. They're awaiting the outcome of the Topeka Hayden Hoisington central plains game to see who they play hello josh how are you doing mr lutz first questions first why'd you respond to jeff's text and not mine <laughs> because <clears throat> i had an array of texts and we were at uh, mr good sense and <laughs> right when i opened up my messages jeff lutz was like it was like bam it was right there in my face and then i went and scrolled back well, through was... and i saw that i missed i missed yours so uh I wasn't saying he was more important. Well, that was. But he is, though, right? That was some bad sense. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) That was some bad sense. Yeah. So there you go. At Mr. Good Sense. So you've had a a great run so far in this 3 8 tournament. You uh, beat Marysville 13 3 in your first round game. You beat Frontenac 10 3 in your second round game. Did you expect what kind of team? You must have a pretty darn good team. We've got a great group of kids, great group of kids and, and upperclassmen led. We have six seniors and, and eight juniors. And, uh, you know, there was there was some lower seed upset, too. Um, I think after yesterday's first round of games, the two, three, and four seed were all knocked out. So Frontenac took care of the four seed, and Hayden took care of the two seed and, and – uh, Hoisington took care of the three seed, so we knew that we were gonna, you know, be be playing the teams. But I told the boys, you know, you get the state tournament; it doesn't matter what the records are. Everybody's gonna be good. Anything can happen, and and there is no more tomorrows. You know, you, you lose, you go home. So uh, Frontenac jumped up, jumped on us two to nothing right in the first, and then we went and put an eight spot up in the in the bottom of the first, and we needed that. We needed that momentum switch because it could have been a, <clears throat> a different outcome. But, uh, and truth be told, we had bases loaded with nobody out in the bottom of the fifth up 10-2, to two, and we should have scored two runs and, and finished it there. But that didn't happen. So we've been leaving a lot of runners on base. I don't know if that's a good or a bad sign. Hopefully a good sign that uh, we'll start getting those, those balls to drop and, and score some more runs. So I uh, sat next to you 
uh, at Lawrence Dumont Stadium for the better part of a decade. And I saw when things weren't going well that uh, Josh Robertson sometimes struggled to hold it together emotionally. Those were professional athletes and grown men, and you were in the press box. What's it like in the dugout, in the uh, third base coaching box with kids? How's that different? I'm thankful that K-State's baseball field has a nice big bathroom with the doors that shut. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, but I didn't there I didn't bring the uh I didn't bring the the bottle of Tabasco either, Jeff. You know, <laughs> the, the the rally Tabasco. I, I forgot that, but uh no, it's you know, it's it's um when you got the pro athletes out there, it, it it's it's funny cuz you get emotionally wrapped up in I mean, did we build the team? No, we didn't build the team. We didn't recruit these players. They they went out. They made the team. We practiced every day together since January 29th. And you build you build that type of relationship with those those boys. There's, we had 19 total kids go out, and every single one of them are here, and they've all been through everything together. Whereas you know in pro ball, I'm not saying that it's <clears throat> less intimate because I sign all those guys and. And we build relationships that that way as well. But guys get, you know, their contract signed or get traded or, you know, get released. Um, And it seems like it can be more of a revolving door uh, throughout professional ranks. But, um, you know, you got to grit the teeth and smile a little bit more, I guess, uh, is the biggest difference. Josh Robertson is our guest. Are you – Finishing up your second year at Trinity or third? I've been here since 2021, so this is the fourth. So this okay. this graduating this graduating class is uh, I had them when they were freshmen, and w- when we won six games that year, and and now we're 42 and seven in the last two years. So they've come a long way. Got great coaches to to support me jack witt he's standing here with me he said he wanted me to tell you hello bob mr south not I jeff witt. and uh grant norris uh who's been with me since i came, i came back to trinity so very fortunate with the coaches we have uh, have jack be a specific uh specific pitching coach and and Grant and I can focus. It allows Grant and I to focus on the other things. But uh, <clears throat> this will be the fourth year. My my last season in Cleveland was the twenty one season. Well, you tell uh, Jack he's the greatest pitcher in South High history. Okay, <laughs> except for maybe you, Ben Bonus. Oh, except yeah, for maybe yeah. Ben Bonus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, Josh, you took on a, a private school uh, on the east side of town and also a private school on the east side of town is collegiate with a tremendous baseball tradition. Uh, You beat them uh, 10 to nothing in your only meeting with them this year, but you knew that that was, uh, that was a, that was a big time hill to climb with collegiate. How challenging did you think it would be to, to compete uh, at a private school when collegiate has had this kind of a history and tradition? Well, the fortunate thing is I've got to be on both sides of it. You know, a a lot of people don't know that before I started with the Wranglers and the Wingnuts, I helped start the baseball program at Trinity in 1998-99 when we built the field and we built the school and we became a Acacia-recognized school. I I was the head coach then. And then I went over to collegiate and coached with Mike Gear. In 2000, 2001, 2002, and 2003, and we won state championships in in 01 and 02. And then, obviously, there was there was 20 years in between. Joey, who actually played for me when I was coaching at collegiate, now took over the reins from his dad. And and uh, <clears throat> 3A does the regionals differently than 4A, 5A, and 6A. Uh, they they make it more about demographics, which I wish they would do it more like. Um, you know, the seating style that 4A, 5A, and 6A, I, I believe 4A, 5A, and 6A, if you have 17 or more losses on the season, you don't even get to play in a regional, where in 3A, all 64 teams play. So you've got eight regions of eight teams, 
you got to win three games to go to state. And for the last four years, it's been, except for this year, the last four years, it's been collegiate, Trinity, Kingman, Cheney. Um, last year we had Haven in there, who's a, a very tough and should be state qualifying team. And <clears throat> we faced collegiate the last three years in the regional finals. They took the first two and went on to one, win back to back state titles. And, and uh, it, it does seem like they just have a continued circulation of good ball players that go through there. So we knew going into the season what our regional was going to look like. We knew that to get to state, we were probably going to have to go through collegiate again. And uh, third time's a charm, I guess they say. So boys went out focused and uh, pitched very well. Joaquin Sanchez threw five innings, gave up one hit. And the boys knocked the ball around and, and we got it done in five innings. So it was, uh, it was a huge hurdle just to get past that game. And I think, I think everybody could take a deep breath going into state because the buildup of that regional championship was so big that honestly the guys were more relaxed about the first game of state than, than we were for the regional championship against collegiate in my opinion. But uh, it's, it's been a fun ride. We got one more to go and, and it uh, looks like it's probably going to be Topeka Hayden. It's going to be tough. I, I know the record doesn't speak for that, but they've won six state titles in the 4A rankings and just dropped down to 3A. And their primary their schedule this year was primarily 5A and 6A schools. So, um, but they threw they threw their best guy yesterday against Heston in a two to nothing uh, matchup. So we've got uh, our number one going on the bump and and plenty of bullpen arms to support him if needed. And uh, hopefully that's a good enough recipe for a win. Yeah, I was going to ask you uh, to tell us about some of your players and to start since you didn't, since you didn't name your ace, who's, who's going for you uh, later this afternoon? Joaquin Sanchez. There you go. Against collegiate. Uh, He's five and one on the season with a sub two ERA. Um, Uh, was named first team all league pitcher, first team all state, uh, signed with Arizona Christian University. That's where he's going to go play for the next uh, four years. And, and uh, he's actually playing with the Kansas Cannons Woodback College uh, League this summer. So going to get him some, some college hitters to face before he heads off to college. And uh, I think that'll be good for him. So that's who we're rolling with against our next opponent name some of your your other players because that's always a valuable thing for coaches to do so who else on trinity is uh has had a big uh impact on your team Braden roberts our center fielder he's a junior he started every game in center field for us since his freshman year he's been a three-time all-league two-time all-state uh center fielder he's got speed he's our leadoff hitter he's got a good strong arm uh, covers a lot of ground in the outfield. Uh, Jackson Witt, Coach Witt's son, is a senior. Uh, was first-team All-League catcher, co-player of the year in our league, first-team All-State. Um, he's got a cannon behind the plate. Um, leads the team in batting average. Please tell Jack he's the best catcher I've ever seen. <laughs> Jack can hear everything you're saying. <laughs> We're standing behind a tree in Anderson Park in Manhattan because the bus was too noisy. So, um, but uh, um, Jackson's been a huge leader for us. He's he's going to go continue his play at Butler County Community College. Um, Josiah Sims was was definitely a gift. His dad, as uh, president of a bank, got transferred from St. Louis. Didn't know much about the kid until we started looking him up. Couldn't find out he's played perfect game. Um, most of his life and had a, a video reel on him. His, his older brother uh, was with the Colorado Rockies organization, left-handed hitting shortstop. And when we lost Easton Norris last year uh, to Cloud, um, Easton was the 3A player of the year. So we're like, well, how are we going to replace that? And, and Josiah Sims transfers in from St. Louis and he's a left-handed hitting shortstop. So, uh, 
there definitely was some divine intervention that came along with that. He's, he's, uh, yeah, God answered our prayers on that one. He's our three hole guy, shortstop, uh, has definitely made some plays at short this year, uh, (laughs) that are very, uh, newsworthy. Um, our middle, our cleanup hitter spot is, is kind of rotated around between our first base beneath an Eberhardt, our right fielder, Jack Carey, and our left fielder, Matt Bolt. Um, unfortunately, April 23rd against Bell Plain, Matt Bolt took a, a bat across his non-throwing hand and broke his handmate bone in two spots. It had to have a plate and six screws put in it. So we've been playing without him. He did have a sports cast put on it, and doctors said he could – play outfield and pitch he just couldn't hit so we played him with a cast in left field in our in our last game and it was good seeing him uh back out there tracking balls down uh ethan eberhardt's been a four-year starter for us big presence at first base uh good defensive first baseman um, jack carey was all state selection and all league at uh, pitcher and outfield uh, one of the strongest star- out- arms in the outfield, 11 assists from the outfield, five double plays, guys trying to tag up on him. He's uh, He started game one of state through 30 pitches. We took him out of there because of the pitch count, so he'd be available today. He started today's game through 54 pitches. And then Matt Omensden, who's been three-time All-State pitcher for us, uh, came in and closed the door. Uh, the rest of the way uh, today. And Maddie's been out with injury. He dislocated his non-throwing shoulder diving for a ball against um, Council Grove like in early April. And so he just got released to come back. So he's still trying to shake a little bit of rust off, but he, he threw tremendously today from I think the third inning on. So he threw five complete innings, 77 pitches, uh, I think only allowed one more run, um, and we ended up winning the second game 10-3. to three. Um, All right, that, Josh. I mean, you've, like uh, said, very, 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 very good, blessed with, with a lot of upperclassmen. I think you mentioned every student who's ever gone to Trinity. We appreciate it. No, there's um, 200. There's 280 Trini- more. You guys wanted to know some information. I mean, I'm going to give you the information. You know, I how, think you did a great job. Yeah, well, that, that, we know, ask you, know you to. We is. ask you to do that. I mean, I sat you with know you me. up there, Bob, for six years with the Wranglers, and then Jeff for 12 years with the Wing Nuts. You guys know how OCD I am. There's no. Yeah, place, and you no know what jerks we Robinson. are, so it's all good. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Hey, uh, congratulations on getting this far, and we hope you seal the deal a little bit later today. 545, the 3A State Baseball Championship game in Manhattan, Trinity, and it looks like they'll be facing Topeka Hayden. Thanks, Josh. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Thanks. All right, Josh Robertson. We'll take a break. We've got an hour left. We've got an interview with Bryce Burknell from Andover Central Track and Field, one of the state's all-time top pole vaulters. Uh, He will join us at 325 back in a minute. Dive into the start of summer at Whole Foods Market. Check out their summer splash event with sales on fresh organic produce, organic strawberries, and a fan favorite sale on Ben and Jerry's and Talenti. Explore deals on grill-friendly meats like organic air-chilled chicken breast, beef and chicken kebabs, all with no antibiotics ever from our meat department. Plus, grab easy sides from prepared foods and cool off with refreshing drinks. Kick off your summer and shop in store or online at Whole Foods Market today. Save on Cox Internet when you add Cox Mobile and get fiber-powered internet at home and unbeatable 5G reliability on the go. So whether you're playing a game at home, yes, cool, or attending one live, no! you can do more without spending more. Learn how to save at cox.com slash internet. Cox Internet is connected to the premises via coaxial cable. Cox Mobile runs on the network with unbeatable 5G reliability as measured by Ookla LLC in the U.S. to H 2023. Results may vary, not an endorsement. Other restrictions apply. Welcome to Nada Yada Island. This season on Nada Yada Island. When we were new, they spoiled me. They even gave me a phone. But then, it's like I didn't exist. Don't take yada yada from your wireless carrier. 
Now with Metro, get that new customer feeling again and again. Introducing Metro Flex. Free 5G phones when you join, same deals as new customers when you stay. Only at Metro by T-Mobile. Just bring your number and ID and sign up for an eligible plan. After 12 months, trade in and get our best deals on select devices.